Hi, in this video I'm going to walk through a couple resources on our cross-district SEL website designed to help educators support our self-care and take care of ourselves. Before we do that, I'm going to talk for a minute about why self-care is important. It is not selfish, it's not indulgent, it's not about everything being hunky-dory and treating ourselves to a spa day or a vacation every once in a while. It could look like a spa day or a vacation, but self-care is really about habits that we build, small choices that we're making every day that make us more resilient. And it's about being able to deal with storms in our lives, to weather storms, to deal with tough times, to bounce back from setbacks. And that is part of what it means to be resilient. And when we're talking about self-care and our ability to be resilient, let's talk about stress. And again, this is all part of not trying to freak you out, but trying to talk about why self-care is, is not selfish, why we should take it seriously, why it's so important. So self-stress uh, is more than a single emotion. We use that phrase, I'm so stressed right now, the way we would say, I'm so frustrated or I'm so angry. But stress is, is better thought about as kind of a spectrum um, when we're feeling angry or anxious or fearful, just some examples. Those are examples of emotions that we're feeling when we're stressed. And stress, you could break it down to a set of chemicals, a cocktail of hormones. Some people call cortisol, it's a hormone, they call it the stress hormone. So cortisol is, is big when we're talking about stress. Adrenaline and norepinephrine are, are other stress hormones that flow through our body and our brain when we're feeling angry or anxious or fearful. And it's okay, it's good to have some of those hormones in our body. We always have a little bit of cortisol, some adrenaline, some norepinephrine in our body. That's fine. That's good for us. But when we have too much for too long or, or way too much suddenly, it's not good for our health and not good for our general well-being. And again, there's varying degrees of this. So I could feel calm, a little uncomfortable, like I'm struggling, like I'm overwhelmed, like I'm out of control. And when I'm calm, I could, you know, okay, chill, relaxed, uncomfortable. I could be irritated or restless, struggling, annoyed, frustrated, nervous. When I'm overwhelmed, I could feel angry or anxious. When I'm out of control, you know, I could be having a panic attack or just seeing red and completely enraged. enraged. So you can see that anxiety, the anger, you're having a similar biological experience of stress with that cortisol, the adrenaline, the norepinephrine flowing through your body. And what does that cocktail of stress hormones do to our body? Well, it changes the way that our muscles work for one, and one of those muscles is our heart. So our heart rate increases, our blood pressure increases, the muscles around our lungs tense up so we feel short of breath, we have skeletal muscles in our arms and our legs all around our bodies. Those tense up so you can have that muscle soreness. You can also feel tension-related headaches because we've got muscles around our skull. And your body is trying to reallocate its resources and shut down things that it doesn't need to do right away so your digestion can be adjusted and you can feel nauseous or have stomach aches because of that. And your brain, um, one way to think about it is that you're, the more stress you have, your brain kind of powers down. So expressing ourselves, choosing the right words, uh, making good choices and evaluating all of our options, those kind of higher order thinking things, it becomes harder to do that the more stressed we are. If you've ever gotten in an argument with your significant other, for example, and afterward when you were calm, you, you thought about what you'd said at the time and you're like, oh, I can't believe I said that. That's one example of how our decision making and our articulation can be affected by stress. And again, this can happen really briefly, like our stress can spike. And another word for that is acute stress. Uh, fight, flight, or freeze response is something you may have heard about before. That's the same idea. Um, that cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine just suddenly floods our system and we have a, a moment or a couple minutes of panic, that acute stress. Another pattern is chronic stress. So we just have too much stress for too long and this becomes toxic. So we talked about cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine. They're changing the way our body is using its resources. And if that occurs for too long, it's poisonous and toxic for our body. So I talked about, you know, the way that those hormones affect our muscles and our brains. And I won't dive into the details, but over 
a long period of weeks or months, if we're feeling too much stress for too long, it really has negative effects on our health outcomes. So again, stress, uh, I'm not trying to freak anybody out, but it is justifying why it's important to take care of ourselves and treat self-care seriously. So with that, let's talk about some solutions and get back to this SEL website. So how do we get where I am right now? Um, all of our member district websites have links to this SEL website. So if I'm on East Central's website, I'm going to go to the staff drop down. I see social emotional learning. If I click it, I will be brought right here. If you run into any issues finding it that way, you can always just directly type in tinyurl.com slash SEL site. And that's a nice trick if you've ever used a smart board before having those tiny URLs to pull up what you need quickly. So if I'm on this main page, I want to find educator resources, right? So I'm going to scroll down. I've got these buttons so, you know, I can click I'm an educator and it'll take me right to this page that's curated for educators. I can also use these drop downs up here. So if I click educators, I end up in the exact same place. And what do I want? I want self-care. So there's this big button for self-care that I'm going to click. And this is a hub. Some of these buttons down here that I'm going to click and talk to you about are going to take you to just other pages on the website. So that's why I talked to you through how to get to this page we're at right now. Educators, self-care, right? Um, some of these are going to take you to other websites. So like I said, this is a hub. This is a jumping off point where you're going to find a lot of useful stuff around self-care. And some of it you might not find useful. Some of it I hope you hopefully will, but this is a collection. So let's talk through these, and I'm going to try and not spend an hour or two on this video, so I'll just cover them briefly. There's this thing called the Calming Strategies Toolbox. Let's click that button. And this is taking all of the strategies that we know to be helpful for building resilience, supporting well-being, managing stress, and packaging them into these five categories. So if I click on Calm Your Body, there's a page about strategies and techniques we can use to manage the effects that I just talked about that stress has on our body. So taking deep breaths, one example tensing and relaxing our muscles progressively, pacing or going for a walk. Again, I won't spend a, an hour going through all of this in detail, but you're going to find a short explanation of each of these things, what it is and why it works, and you're going to find resources. So in some cases, those will be videos. I can click on any of those things and it opens up a YouTube video for me. Some of them are going to have a resource folder. So in this case, if I click here, it's going to open up a resource folder with some posters and things I can I can print out. Um, many of these have a poster, so if you want, for example, to have a prompt near your workspace to remember a breathing exercise, we've got a poster. Well, several different options of posters you could use as a reminder. So again, not trying to spend two hours on this video. I won't go through all of these, but you can see. And Calming Strategies Toolbox. I'm on that drop down, so I can go here and click Calm Your Thoughts. Same format. So you've got strategies and resources under each one. And again, each one is going to explain kind of what this is briefly and why it works. So you can get the idea before you really dive into the resources. So express yourself. Changing your space. And taking care of yourself. So let's get back to that educator self-care page. So I'm going to go back to my educator drop-down and click self-care. What else do we have here? SEL apps. So let's click this button. So we've got some apps for stress management. And down here, we've got some apps for organization. Again, I could spend a lot of time talking about any one of these. Um, we tried to organize these, so the free apps are, are up here. These are both free. Down here, Headspace, Calm, 
Insight Timer, they have some free features and we've described kind of what's free and how much the paid plans cost, but these have some subscription plans that um, open up all the features of the app and do cost money per month. This one I'll give a shout out to is my absolute favorite, the Mood Meter app. It's a one-time, $1 purchase. It's an extremely simple app that is very easy to build into your routine and just involves checking in versus like listening to recordings and stuff. It's really easy to use, really simple, really awesome. Let's get back to educators, self-care. Mental health services and crisis talk text services. Two buttons, but they're gonna they're gonna take you to the same page. Right here, we have crisis hotline and chat services. So if you're watching this video, these are good things to be aware of. If you're ever in mental health crisis, um, there are numbers here that you can call and a description of kind of what the experience is like when you call those numbers, like who's gonna pick up, um, how long is it gonna take, etc and then local mental health providers. So these are contact information, website links for hospitals, mental health centers. Um, some of them offer remote mental health services. And here's a video where a wonderful therapist on YouTube in four, four or so minutes explains, hey, what is, what is it like to attend your first therapy appointment? Because that can be a scary barrier for a lot of folks. So let's get back to educator self-care. Wellness assessments. So if I click this button, it's going to open up a folder of, I'm going to click on this one as an example. You may have heard of this. A lot of PLCs do this, um, go through the wellness wheel. So we break up wellness into different areas and you answer a couple of questions about how you're doing in each of those areas, physical, financial, intellectual wellness. And it helps you get an idea of how am I doing? Where do I want to set some, some goals perhaps to help support my self-care and my wellness? So we have three different examples. The one that I clicked on is, is probably my personal favorite. They're just all formatted slightly differently. Self-care resources. So if I click this, it's going to take me to A variety of other resources like compassion's compassion resilience tools kit for schools support for teachers affected by trauma there's just a, a websites out there that you can jump to that are going to have indexes of resources if you really want to dive in um, won't go too much into that but just if you if you want to dive in click on one of those educators self-care So we've got some YouTube channels. Um, Katie Morton is the therapist that I just talked about. She is fantastic. Um, she has video, so many videos. They're all extremely well done. She's very articulate. She was the one I was talking about, has a four minute video about what's it like to attend your first therapy appointment. She has videos about all kinds of mental health issues. Dealing with disappointment is right here. How to set boundaries. So if there's a topic that you're concerned about related to mental health or your well-being or self-care, she probably has a great video on it. Yoga with Adrienne has really blown up during the COVID-19 pandemic. I think she's gained 4 million followers. She's up to 9 million. Hello. She just has a fantastic library of yoga videos ranging from five minutes to hour long on all kinds of different themes. So, so many options and she's extremely good at what she does and very popular. Podcasts. So we, we didn't, we picked these very carefully. Um, the Teacher Wellbeing Podcast, Truth for Teachers, Cult of Pedagogy. You're going to find, um, in particular with Cult of Pedagogy, a lot of interesting variety of topics, student engagement, all sorts of things, but there are specific episodes about self-care. These two are, are very focused on self-care in particular. And then shout out for a podcast that I'm part of with two colleagues, A Slice of SEL. So this is local. It's aimed only at educators and only in educators in the Scred member districts. And we've been doing a series on educator self-care for about two months now, as of the time I recorded this video. So that's available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all the popular podcast services. And lastly, 
let's go to district specific up here. So say that I work in Chisago Lakes. Each district has a poster. Remember that calming strategies toolbox that we, we talked about a couple minutes ago? where calm your body, calm your thoughts, express yourself, all those techniques. Um, this is a poster that's kind of a snapshot of all of that. So every district has one. I have one of these printed near my workspace just as a reminder of, and I have the things highlighted that I'm trying to do um, to support my resilience and self-care. So if you would like to print one of those out and keep it near your workspace and highlight the things that you're trying to work on and build habits around, I would personally recommend that. And just a reminder of how to get to all that stuff, so I can click Educators and that big button, Self-Care. Thanks for spending time with me and watching this video. Really hope that it helps you take care of yourself and support your resilience.